Welcome to a preview of week four of US history, titled The New Government Finds Its Way. So we will pick up where we last left off last week with the Articles of Confederation. And now we're going to talk about George Washington's federal government, the first strong central government of the United States. So we will be shedding light of um, Washington's administration, Hamilton's ambitious economic plans and the opposition they faced, as well as the emergence of a two-party system that remains strong till today, and how territorial expansion brought Americans into conflicts with the British and Native Americans. So George Washington's presidency was a pivotal time for the young United States. The first task was building a strong federal government. The adoption of the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights in 1787 and 1791, respectively, provided the legal framework for the federal government and safeguarded individual rights. Key figures like Alexander Hamilton, the first Secretary of the Treasury, uh, in today's terms that would be the equivalent of the Minister of Finance, played a crucial role in establishing the nation's first financial stability, stable system. They created the first national bank, they implemented tariffs or taxes, and assumed debts to create a sound financial footing for the federal government. So we will discuss Alexander Hamilton's ambitious economic plans, which were at the center of Washington's administration. He envisioned a strong, industrialized nation with a robust financial system. Hamilton's reports on public credit, a national bank, and manufacturing laid the groundwork for economic growth. However, his policies faced staunch opposition from Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, who argued that they favored the wealthy elite and encroached upon the state's rights. This opposition ultimately led to the formation of the first political parties in the United States. So the emergence of a two-party system was a significant development during this period. The Federalist Party, led by Hamilton and John Adams, advocated for a strong federal government, a national bank, and strong ties with Britain. In contrast, the Democratic Republican Party. Now, let me just pause here for a second. We know today that there are two major parties in the U.S., the Democrats and the Republicans. So at the time that we're speaking about the late 18th century, early 19th century, there was a party, one party, and named the Democratic Republican Party, led by Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. They championed state rights, agrarianism, and closer relations with France. This political division reflected broader ideological differences and became a hallmark of American politics, laying laying the foundation for the modern two-party system. Territorial expansion was a defining feature of early America. The Louisiana Purchase in 1803 under Thomas Jefferson doubled the size of the nation and opened up vast opportunities for westward expansion. However, this expansion brought Americans into conflict with both the British and the Native Americans. The British were reluctant to relinquish control of the Great Lakes region and the Northwest Territory, leading to conflicts such as the War of 1812, which we will will be analyzing. This war highlighted the unresolved issues between the United States and Great Britain and solid, solidified American nationalism. Territorial expansion also had profound consequences for Native Americans who were forcibly displaced from their ancestral lands. This policy of Indian removal, most notably seen in the Trail of Tears, resulted in immense suffering and loss of life for indigenous peoples. So in summary, the early years of the United States were marked by the establishment of a strong federal government under Washington, Hamilton's economic plans, and of course, its ensuing opposition, the emergence of a two-party political system, and territorial expansion 
that brought both opportunities and conflicts. These events and developments shaped the nation's character and laid the groundwork for the complex history that followed. So thank you. And I want to say that I look forward to working with you all. You've been doing fantastic so far, and we will continue building, communicating, and improving. So thank you.